Dear students, in this lecture, we shall learn about inverse functions and also their economic application. In the simplest of the ways, we can explain an inverse function just like a reciprocal. We have a value x and if we take the reciprocal of it, it becomes 1 over x. So, we have been doing this thing in algebra and it is quite similar to that. As you can see, we have uh, given a simple definition of that, uh, the reciprocal of a function. But how actually it is done? If we consider a function which we would like to call original function, the inverse function of which we are looking for. And that original function is y is equal to f of x, which is a very famous form of uh, function. Then uh, this, uh, you know, shifting will take place and x will then become the dependent variable which will be dependent on the value of y. And you can also observe a change in f. Now f appears as a reciprocalized version of it or an inverse of it, f inverse. This is, uh, it is because when we shifted it from one side to the other side of the equation, definitely it will become 1 over f and in other words, f raised to the power minus f. So, uh, uh, f raised to the power minus 1. So, in this way, we can write the inverse function like this. Or in more suitable way, in, instead of writing this f inverse, we can write g of y. Because we know that a function is usually represented with small f, capital F, small g, capital G, small h, and capital H. And there are other Greek letters as well, psi and phi. These are all options that are available. So we should change it because now if we plot the function, it will not look like the same function. If it was positively slope function with a certain slope, um, the result can, can, can be altogether different. And definitely we can expect maybe a different slope. So it's not the same function. The mapping of the function also will give us a different set of values of x and y. Now, let's uh, see that how this can be applied on economic situations. Uh, one of the most commonly used inverse function in economics is the inverse demand function that we are going to analyze. As you can see on this slide, we have demand function in its explicit form. We can see that it's a quotient and price is there as the independent variable. It's a very well-known uh, law of demand that explains this demand function and we can also say that d is a function of p or in other words d is f of p. So this is something that we already know. Now looking at this situation from a different angle because if a producer is considered he will basically be targeting the output primarily and he would be thinking about how much to produce and once he decides that then he can come to the resulting price. So in his Sight, in his opinion, the first thing that he should consider is the output, that is Q, or which in this case is represented with D. So, we can expect the reversal or the reciprocal, that is, price will become the dependent variable and demand will become the independent variable. How it can be done with the same function? It's very easy to see. Let us see how we can do that. So you can see from the previous function that we saw, there is cross multiplication and as a result of that, P is shifted to the left hand side and D is shifted to the right hand side. In order to get rid of this root, because all of us know that we are looking for the value of the variable itself and not its square, not its of any power, not of its roots. So it's better to get the value, actual value of the variable and by taking this cube on both sides we have actually achieved that. So p is actually equal to this value. Now we can see that now p is a function of d. It is reversed. This is actually known as inverse demand function whereas the first function that we started with was the demand function and now we are having inverse demand function. In this way we can transform any demand function into its inverse demand function form. Putting it in more concrete terms, this is the function that we just achieved and in that we can assume a certain value. For example, we can assume that d is equal to 10. 
and putting that into the inverse demand function, we get the resulting price. So in this way, we can do many calculations and come up with various values of price depending upon the various levels of output. Now, as a caveat, these two values, they are written side by side. And the purpose of writing this is that the first was the function in terms of P. And the second one is a function in terms of D. And the notations, they are different. One is represented with F and the other is represented with G. Just to differentiate because the inverse function actually it's not the same function as the original function. Just like we can say uh, 1 over x is not equal to x, but it comes with a parametric restriction. If x is equal to 1, then x and 1 over x, they can be equal. But in most of the cases, the inverse function is not equal to the original function. 